Hello, everybody. My name is Teacher Ian, and I'm the owner of Right Start Newcomer Services. Welcome to tonight's Learn Canadian English lesson. So welcome if you're joining us live, hello. And if you're watching the replay, hello, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, before we begin tonight's live stream, I'd like to acknowledge that Right Start Newcomer Services conducts business in Chibuktuk, which is how you say Halifax in the Mi'kmaq language. This city is part of the ancestral unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Okay, so if you're watching, please say hello, introduce yourself if this is your first lesson, and if you've been here a bunch of times, just say, hey, I am watching. So I saw that we had one comment from Mariu. So hi, Mariu. Good afternoon. Welcome to the lesson. And I'm so happy that you could join us again today. Alrighty, let's get started. Uh, I think we have an interesting lesson. Um, if you're like me, you're very interested in the environment. So tonight's Learn Canadian English lesson is about the environment. And we've got a lot to cover. So we're going to power through. Um, I know you're in Halifax. It's a beautiful day. Hopefully we'll end a little bit early so you have time to enjoy our, our wonderful environment. Uh, okay, great. So uh, that's great to hear, Mary Yu. Thank you. And Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. Uh, nice. Thank you for joining. Nice to meet you. And I, I don't recognize your name, so this may be your first class. So that's great. We have some new students. Let's get to work, okay? Um, we'll have a plan for tonight. So there's five things. This might be ambitious, but five things that we're going to do together tonight. So the first is our discussion. We're going to talk a little bit about the environment. Two, we're going to have a listening activity. So I'm going to read, I think, 10 sentences about Canada's environment. Then I'm going to ask you some questions about that. Uh, number three, we're going to learn some vocabulary so we can better talk about the environment. And when we read an article in English about the environment, we can understand it better. Then we're going to look at some charts. So we're going to practice a little bit reading and talking about charts. And then we're going to share some tips uh, with each other about how to take care of the environment. All right, before we move on, let's just see what people are saying. Uh, Mario says, I live in Medellin and it's rainy today. OK, sorry to hear that. Kind of like Halifax, it's going to be rainy uh, like for the next five or six days. So. I don't think too many people from Halifax are going to join us tonight because it's beautiful. Let me just show you the real world out there. Uh, nice blue sky. So it's it's one of the, the nicest days for a while, and it's going to be rainy for the next five or six days. Uh, so I know where you're coming from, Mario. And Elisa says, yes, it's my first class. Great. Thank you for joining us. And everybody, welcome Alyssa. Say hello to Alyssa. Welcome to your first lesson. And you must be very excited to be here and learn Canadian English. Hi, Nazra. Nice to see you. I recognize your name, I think. So welcome back. And if this is your first time, just, just please let us know a little bit about yourself. All right. So we're going to learn vocabulary. We're going to practice listening. We're going to read charts. And we're going to share our best tips for the environment. So we have a busy, fun, interesting lesson, I hope. All right, let's move on to our discussion. So we usually start these lessons with four or five questions. And this is just a good chance for us to practice writing. It's a good chance for us to practice expressing ourselves in English. All right, so answer one of the questions, answer all the questions if you like. Number one, what is the environment? So what does it mean when we talk about the environment? And if you don't know, you can use Google in these lessons. Number two, how worried are you about the environment? So are you very worried? Are you a little bit worried or are you not worried at all? And, and why do you feel that way? Number three, what are the biggest problems with the environment? So around the world or in Canada or where you live, 
what are some of the big problems that we are facing together? And then last one, what do you do now to help the environment? So do you recycle? Do you use less water? Do you have an electric car? So what are the things that you do and your family does to help the environment? So I'm gonna be quiet and I'll give you a few minutes to, to write out an answer to these questions. And that's one of the, the main rules of this class is not to be shy. Nobody's going to make fun of you if you don't have perfect English. So don't be shy. Just participate as much or as little as you want. Okay, great. So Mary Yu is first. Uh, let's check out her answer to number one. The environment in Medellin is mountainous. Good word, mountainous. It has lots of mountains, like in the background here. It has many rivers and it rains a lot. Great sentence. Okay, I like that very much. That's excellent. I think you forgot your period at the end. But other than that, great, great sentence, Mary Yu. All right, thank you for sharing. Uh, environment is everything that surrounds us. Alyssa, you're exactly right. Um, it's, it's the world around us. So, you know, it could be mountains, forest, rivers, ocean, but could also mean like in the city, right? You can have a city environment as well. Great, just one thing, check your spelling of environment because it does have an N. Uh, the N is kind of silent, right? We say environment, we don't say environment, but the N is there right before the M. So spelling environment and uh, surrounds should be S-U-R-R-O-U-N-D-S. -R -R and then you got your period at the end. There you go. Correction, that's perfect. I like it when students correct themselves and they don't need me to do it. All right, thank you, Alyssa, great answer. Uh, Beatrice is here, hey Beatrice, uh, hi teacher. It's what surrounds us and our natural resources. Right, so our natural resources are part of the environment. Great, I'm extremely worried we are living the results of not caring for the environment for so many years. Yeah, I mean, my generation, my parents and grandparents did a lot of bad things. Part of it was that they didn't know, right? They didn't know some things were bad for the environment, but then once they learned it was bad, they kept doing it. All right, so I agree with you there. Uh, biggest problems is global warming. The earth or the globe is getting warmer. So global warming is a big problem. And number four, this is what you do. So recycling. Great, using things again. Uh, polluting, not polluting. Okay, polluting, we'll, we'll talk about this later, but it's putting bad things in the environment. Uh, two T's for polluting. Great, and using reusable containers. And then I think you meant et cetera, ETC at the end. So great job, two words for spelling, polluting and environment, Beatrice. And that's a great answer. Okay, uh, I don't see any other answers, but that's enough. That's great. And if you want to answer later, you can. Uh, oh, Mary, you just snuck in there with an answer. Uh, I'm very concerned about the accumulation of garbage in the environment. Tell me about it. I mean, there's so much garbage everywhere. Um, but yeah, in the oceans, lakes, forests, things like that. Uh, we recycle garbage, but I think it is not enough. Great answer. I'm going to change one thing uh, about your answer. So I think it is not enough. It's more common in English to say, I don't think, 
it's enough. So put the negative before think. Instead of I think it's not enough, I don't think it is enough. And that's a great sentence, Marriott. All right, so I think we know, we know what the environment is. Some of us are worried. I think especially if you have kids, right? You're worried about what is the earth gonna be like in 10, 20, 30 years? Uh, that would be really scary. And what are the biggest problems? Global warming, too many people overpopulation, weather is changing, oceans are rising. I mean, there's a million problems. Uh, and what do you do? Um, I try to be careful. I try to drive very little. I try to recycle. I try to pick up garbage in my neighborhood. So we all try to do a little bit to help the environment. Awesome. You guys are amazing. I'm going to tell you, in this part, this is a listening practice. So I'm going to read 10 sentences about Canada's environment. All right, so this is a listening activity. You just have to listen to me. But as you listen, I would like you to take notes. So this is a good chance to practice your note taking because after I finish reading, I'm gonna ask you questions about what you hear. And it's a lot easier if you have some notes, but if you don't have a pencil and you just wanna listen, that's okay too. All right, before we do that, I just wanna see a couple more answers here. Um, oh, very cool. Uh, Alyssa is saving to buy an electric car. I try to use lesser and lesser water for doing chores at home. That's great. Great answer. Great English. Congratulations on your electric car. Don't need to say lesser. Let's just say less and less water. So less and less water instead of lesser and lesser. And other than that, that's a perfect answer. All right, great. And Mario, I think that with climate change, we can run out of drinking water. Maybe, right? Maybe. As you'll learn, uh, Canada does have lots of fresh water. Um, so maybe you, you have to move to Canada before that happens. Okay, let's listen. I think these facts are interesting. So just 10 facts about the environment, then I'm gonna ask you 10 questions after. So listen and take notes. Look at the, I think that's Niagara Falls. And then answer the questions that follow. Uh, this is in the west of Canada in Banff. All right, here we go. Number one. Let's just get my sentences here. All right, number one, Canada is the birthplace of Greenpeace in 1971. So Greenpeace, the organization was founded in Canada in 1971. Number two, the blue box for holding recyclables was invented in Canada. Did you know that? Number three, Canada has 31,752 lakes that are larger than three square kilometers. Did you get that? Uh, I might read them one more time after I'm all finished just so you can check your notes. Number four, Eureka in Nunavut receives the least annual precipitation in Canada. Did you know that? Number five, Canada is home to 25% of the world's wetlands. So wetlands are places with water. Um, a lot of like ducks and stuff live there. So Canada is home to 25% of the world's wetlands. Pretty cool. Number six, Canada has over 70,000 
plant and animal species. Currently, there are 668 endangered species in Canada. So these are animals or uh, plants that are, are close to dying off. That's a lot. Number seven, still with me? Uh, we've only got 10, we've got a few more to go. Number seven, Canada has the longest coastline in the world at 243,793 kilometers long. Wow, that's really long. All right, number eight. Canada is the second largest producer of hydroelectricity in the world. The first, the world's first hydroelectric plant was built in Niagara Falls in 1879. So the first hydroelectric, which is electricity made through, through water, was built in Niagara Falls in Ontario in 1879. Wow. Okay, two more. Number nine, the hottest day ever in Canada was in Saskatchewan and the temperature was 45 degrees Celsius. It's pretty hot. Number 10, the coldest day ever in Canada was in the Yukon Territory and the temperature was minus 62.8 degrees Celsius. That's cold. Minus 62.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, so hopefully you're still with us. You listened carefully, you understood what I was saying, and you wrote down a few notes. So when I ask you questions, you're going to understand that. Uh, very quickly, I'll read them again. Canada is the birthplace of Greenpeace in 1971. Number two, the blue box was created in Canada. Did you know that? Number three, Canada has 31,752 lakes that are larger than three square kilometers. There's one behind me. All right, number four, uh, the least or the lowest amount of precipitation is in Eureka, Nunavut, which gets only 64 millimeters a year, which is only like that much precipitation, which is not very much. Uh, Canada is home to 25% of the world's wetlands. Number six, Canada has over 70,000 plant and animal species with 668 endangered species. Canada has the longest coastline in the world at 243,793 kilometers. Canada is the second largest hydroelectric producer in the world. And the first hydroelectric plant was built in Niagara Falls, Ontario in 1879. The hottest day ever in Canada was 45 degrees Celsius, and this was in Saskatchewan. And the coldest day ever was in the Yukon Territory, and it was minus 62.8 degrees Celsius. Whew. Okay, so what are the answers? So uh, let's listen for uh, the questions. And then I'm going to share the answers after. All right. So number one, what organization was founded in Canada in 1971? So number one answer, write it in the chat. What organization was founded in Canada in 1971?
Okay, great. Some people were listening. Greenpeace, very good. You got it, Alyssa. Greenpeace, Greenpeace. Hey, Tony. Um, I think it's one word, uh, but it doesn't really matter if you spell it with two words. That's fine. But yeah, I, I didn't really realize it was a Canadian organization. So Greenpeace, you can go to their website. They do lots of great work to protect the environment. Awesome. One point if you got that correct. Number two, what was created by a Canadian to help with recycling? What was created by a Canadian to help with recycling? Okay, great. Tony was first. Great job, Tony. Great job, Alyssa. A blue box. So I don't know if you use those in your country or your city. It's just this blue box with a recycling sign. And then that's how you can bring your recycling to the recycling plant. Okay, great. Blue box. Blue, blue box. All right. Uh, number three question is, how many lakes does Canada have that are larger than three square kilometers? How many lakes does Canada have larger than three square kilometers? So this one, I hope you were taking notes. Um, Beatrice said, let me check my notes. Not quite. You're very close, Beatrice. Yes, I think Elisa got it. So it's 31,752. Uh, good, you're very close, Tony. It was just a 252, and you would have had it as well. So great job, Alyssa. That is the correct answer. Awesome. Um, number four, where or what... What territory in Canada has the least amount of precipitation? Precipitation means rain or snow, uh, water that comes from the sky. Which territory in Canada has the least precipitation? Oh, very good spelling. Bravo. Bravo, Beatrice. Great spelling. Eureka. Nunavut. So Nunavut is in the very north of Canada. It's one of the very large territories in the north. And they get some snow, but, but of course, not a lot of rain. Uh, great. So Eureka is the town. The territory is called Nunavut. Great job, uh, Beatrice and Alyssa. That's awesome. Number, where are we? Number five. Canada is home to what percentage of the world's wetlands. So what percentage of the world's wetlands are in Canada? You guys are amazing. Are you sure you guys need English classes because you're doing such a great job? Tony, you got it. 25%. Alyssa, 25%. Beatrice, 25%. Amazing. Great work. Uh, let's move on. Number six. Mario, you got it as well. That's great. Number six. How many plant and animal species are there in Canada? So how many plant and animal species are there in Canada? And if you're just joining us, I don't expect you to know this. Uh, I just read some sentences and the students were taking notes and they're answering these questions from their notes. All right, so 70, uh, usually we use a comma. So let's separate the, the thousands with a comma instead of a period because I know in some places they use a period. Um, but yeah, it's more common to use a comma. So 70,000 or over 70,000. So 70,000 is a great answer. Uh, no problem, Melissa. Uh, that's no problem at all. So over 70,000 plants and animals 
species in Canada, which is a lot. All right, great. Number, where are we? Number seven, how long is Canada's coastline? So on the ocean, add up all the, the coast of Canada. What do you get? Okay, so Beatrice, uh, let's check my notes here. Four, three, seven, three, nine. Beatrice got it. Yes. So Beatrice, that is exactly right. 243,793. And that's a really good skill, you know, um, saying really big numbers. So when it gets to like more than 100,000 or more than a million, being able to say that number and understand that number is really important. Great job. Uh, Tony, great. It is the longest coast in the world. And you were close. Uh, you missed the two. So it was 243,000. Uh, that's okay, Alyssa, no problem. All right. So Canada is, it is the second largest country in the world and we do have the largest coastline. If you look at Canada, there are tons of islands, right? Especially in the north. So they count all of those islands as having that much coastline. All right, so number eight. When was the world's first hydroelectric plant built? When was the world's first hydroelectric plant built? Okay, did we get it? Alyssa got this one. Great. So 1879. So over a hundred and what, 50 years ago. Not quite 50, almost 150 years ago. So it's pretty impressive. Oh, I think you're off by a year, Beatrice. I think it was 79. So uh, very close. Niagara Falls, Ontario, which is cool. Uh, and actually my brother did some work on that old power plant uh, in Niagara Falls. He's an engineer and his company did some work on that plant. All right, next. What was the hottest temperature ever in Canada? What was the hottest temperature ever in Canada? It's not that bad. Uh, it's it's not minus 45. So that might be the coldest, but what's the hottest? You must be Canadian, right? Alyssa, you say sorry a lot and, and Canadians like to say sorry, so. Uh, no problem. You don't really need to apologize, but it's very nice. Uh, 45. Yes. So it is plus 45. Canada gets hot, right? It, some places, especially during the summer in the prairies. So the prairies is the west of Canada. So Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba get really, really hot in the summer. Even Toronto. Toronto gets really hot and humid. So it can get quite hot in Canada. So Mario, you're right. Beatrice, you're right. Tony, minus 16. So I'm glad that's not the hottest temperature. Um, from Venezuela, we say sorry a lot. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we share that, our culture, as we say sorry a lot here in Canada too. Awesome. So last question, number 10. What was the coldest temperature ever in Canada? What was the coldest temperature? Uh, you meant 45. Okay, I, I kind of guessed that. 
what was the coldest temperature ever recorded in Canada? Okay, minus 62.8, minus 62.8. Great, so great job, Alyssa, Mariu, you both got it. That's crazy cold. I couldn't imagine being in that cold of a place. Um, Halifax gets cold in winter, but only minus 10, minus 15 sometimes, but nothing like minus 62. You would freeze, right? Uh, Beatrice, yeah, you would freeze your butt off. I mean, your skin freezes. I mean, theoretically at, you know, zero or minus one. Um, so you'd really have to bundle up, wear lots of clothing and wouldn't spend that much time outside. Um, minus 45. Hey, Viviana. Um, so the hottest temperature was plus 45. The coldest is minus 62.8. I would die too, right? Uh, I'm Canadian and I would die. I feel like dying when it's minus 15 or 20. So minus 62 is just crazy, crazy. Uh, I like the weather in Halifax. Yeah, it's it's not bad. I mean, it doesn't get super hot or super cold. So it's kind of in the middle, um, but it is really windy. So when you get a lot of wind and it's cold, you get wind chill and then you freeze your butt off anyway. So it's not too bad. Halifax is okay compared to some other places in Canada where it gets a lot colder. Enjoying. I like the quotes. Uh, we are currently enjoying 42 degrees right here now in Merida. So that's hot. That would be almost a record in Canada, Beatrice. So we said our record was 45 and you have 42 today. Wow. How do you do it? Lots of drinks, probably, hopefully you have a beach or a pool close by, but wow, that's crazy hot. Um, today is beautiful in Halifax. Yesterday, it felt like freezing. Yeah, yesterday was freezing for some reason um, in Halifax. Okay, Gary, yeah. Yesterday, yeah, it started out nice. The morning was nice, and then it got cold, cold, cold. Awesome. You guys are amazing. So here are the answers. Uh, I think you got them all. Um, green piece, blue box, 31, 752, none of it, 25 degrees, over 70,000, blah, blah, blah. So we went over all the answers. You did a great job, but that's a great skill to practice, especially if you're taking like an English exam, because um, some of those exams like IELTS and the CELPIP exam, you have to listen, take notes, and then write the answers after. Okay, uh, it's hell here. Thank God for AC, LOL. Uh, AC, I don't know if you know, but stands for air conditioning. Um, I do want to say one thing about your sentence, Beatrice. Can you guess what I'm going to say? Uh, what I would correct in that sentence. So the one thing I would correct, well, uh, usually God is capitalized, uh, but we, instead of thanks God, we just say thank God, right? So take out the S on thanks. So thank God instead of thanks. Okay, do you got that? Um, but I hear that mistake very often, right? Um, I don't know, maybe it's it's just translated from, from Spanish to English, but thank God instead of thanks God. And you'll sound more and more Canadian. Okay, great job, Beatrice. Uh, from Cuba, very hot here too. Yes, uh, but beautiful. And my friend just got back from Cuba. She was there for two weeks. She said it was amazing. The weather was amazing. Um, but yeah, I heard it gets very hot in Cuba. Okay, great. Awesome. You're very welcome, Beatrice. So let's quickly do some vocabulary. Uh, and then I, I 
think we'll, we won't have that much time at the end. So we might not get to the charts today, but let's try and guess 10 words about the environment. And if you want, you can practice making a sentence. So the first word, or actually it's two words. So count the number of spaces, try and guess what word or expression. Um, we can do the first one together. So number one, changes in the earth's weather that is caused by human activity. So changes in the earth's weather. Two words, first word has eight letters, and the second word has six letters. This is kind of like what you'd see in a crossword puzzle or something. Anybody know? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I was looking for climate change. Maybe I put too many blanks. Four, five, six. Yeah, I think I put too many blanks. My bad, I'm sorry. Uh, climate change, yeah, so Beatrice. Uh, sorry, Alyssa, you almost got it. It was my mistake. I put too many blanks. Climate change. So you'll see this a lot in the news. Climate change is the process of the world's weather and temperature changing. Yeah, I know, uh, duh, right? Okay, so number one, climate change might be a good activity if you wanted to, to write sentences. Um, you can do it now, you can do it after class, but practice using this vocabulary in sentences because that's how you remember it, right? Uh, we might not have time to go over all your sentences, but if you want to write it in the chat, I will correct those for you. All right, number two, animals, birds, insects, living naturally in the world. And this has eight letters. And I don't think I made a mistake here. So what would we call the, all the animals, birds, insects that are living naturally in the world, not living with us, those are pets, but animals out in the world. Bears, fish, moose, caribou, geese, mosquitoes. Oh man, mosquitoes are so bad in Canada. Oh, good word. Uh, Wrong number of spaces, but you are correct. And that is a word that we use for exactly that. I was just looking for something with more spaces, fauna. That's a great word, fauna. Beatrice taught us a new word today. Wow, you guys are great, fauna. That's, that's also uh, ecosystem. So you're close, Tony, but the ecosystem includes the air, the water, the trees, all that stuff. But here we're just talking about the animals. So I was looking for wildlife. Wildlife. And if you're really brave, you can use that in a sentence. Okay, great, good. So we learned two words. Second one is wildlife. Hmm. Uh, a resource that does not run out especially of energy sources like solar and wind. So I can't see how many blanks there, but. Should be 10. So what do we call resources that we can use again and again and that don't run out? Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Oh, good one. Clean energy. Yeah, that's another word for it, Tony. 
uh, but that's not exactly the word I wanted. I'm looking for a one word answer. Alternative, that's a good guess. Um, you're close, you're close Beatrice, but I think alternative could include nuclear um, and some other things that maybe are not included in this word. Okay, great guesses. I'm gonna move quickly. The word I was looking for is renewable. So renewable means it will create itself like wind, solar, water, power. Alyssa, you got it, renewable, great. Uh, close. So yeah, that's that's maybe part English, part Spanish. Renewable would be the English word. Okay, great job, you guys. The process of making air, water, or soil dirty. Or what is it that goes into the air, water, and soil that makes it dirty, I guess. Nine letters. Uh, had the word on the tip of my tongue. Great, good expression. Uh, you almost had it, I'm sure. Great, Alyssa got it, but two L's. So the word is pollution, double L, pollution. And great job, Beatrice got it too. Ah, that's another word that's very similar. It just has a different number of letters, Mary you. So great. Contamination, yeah, I mean, a pollution or pollution is contamination. So pretty much they're the same thing. Uh, you're very welcome, Alyssa. All right, I, I mentioned this when I read the sentences in the other one. Uh, an animal or plant that is close to dying off forever. So meaning that there are very few of them left and if we keep doing what we're doing, maybe they will die off. So two words, 10 letters and eight letters. Okay, so uh, Tony, that's a very related word and extinction means that they're all dead or they are extinct, right? The animal is extinct. Dinosaurs are extinct, I hope, right? So very close, but these animals are almost there, right? They might survive, they might not, but it's, it's a related term. So endangered, very good. That's the first word, endangered. So you got half a mark, Beatrice. Uh, close. So let's go with Tony's spelling, extinct. You need the C there, Viviana. So extinct, C before T, uh, and you're, you're very close, right? Endangered species. Okay, we got it. So I was looking for that expression, endangered species. Uh, and you're also very close, Alyssa, just the spelling of endangered is E-N endangered. All right, awesome job, you guys. All right, number six, to make something new from materials that have been used before. Should be seven letters. Yeah, I wrote seven there. So seven letters, make something new from materials that have been used before. Oh, Beatrice, okay. Good typing, Beatrice. Recycle, so this is an easy one. Recycle, when you come to Canada, if you're not in Canada yet, you have to learn all the rules about recycling, right? So what goes in the green box or bin? What goes in the blue box? What do you do with your garbage? Where do you take your TV or whatever when it breaks? So there, we have all kinds of rules about recycling but hopefully it is helping the environment. So great job, Mary you, Beatrice, Alyssa, and Tony. You all got it right. 
Awesome. This one's a little tricky. Um, seven letters. The place in which a species normally lives. So the world that an animal or plant or something lives in. Hmm. Starts with H. There's a clue starts with the letter H. Hey, great vocabulary. Alyssa, awesome. Habitat, Beatrice got it too. Tony got it too. You guys are awesome. So habitat is where an animal lives. And in Canada, we always say to leave the habitat like you found it. So if you go into the forest, make sure you take everything out that you brought in. And you don't want to leave garbage and stuff in animals' habitat. And a forest could be habitat, right, Mariu? So it could be a forest, but it could also be a, um, an ocean or a lake or prairie or whatever. All right, great. Let's do three more and then we're almost finished for today. This is a hyphenated word. So one word, but it has a hyphen in the middle. Able to use less energy, especially vehicles, appliances, etc. So things that use less energy or electricity. Hmm. That's a tricky one. Any guesses? Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. The answer I was looking for is energy efficient. Energy something, okay, close. Can't find the word, that's a hard one. Energy efficient. So I encourage you to buy things that are energy efficient because power in, well, in Nova Scotia, each province is different, but Nova Scotia, it's very expensive for electricity. Okay, so by energy efficient things, a fuel like oil or coal formed from very old plant and animal fossils. Hmm. The answer is in the question. So fuels like oil, coal or gas that are very bad for the environment that come from old plant and animal fossils. This is like the opposite of renewable. Renewable means it keeps coming back. This, once we use it, it's gone forever. Fossil fuel. Okay, great. That's what I was looking for, Beatrice. So fossil fuel is that dirty energy Canada, we produce a lot of fossil fuels. So especially oil and gas, we produce a lot of fossil fuels and we use a lot of fossil fuels. All right, last one. Then we've got one more activity and we're done. Uh, so number 10, to use more than is necessary or to use something in a bad way or wasteful way to use it inefficiently. Or actually things that you throw out that nobody uses anymore. Okay, great. Waste. That's all I was looking for. Very good, Alyssa. Waste. Control your waste, right? Don't waste things. Don't waste food. Don't waste water. Don't waste electricity. And it's also the name of the things that we get rid of, right? Household waste or trash, right? It's 
it's pretty much the same as trash, right? So trash is waste that we don't want anymore. Okay, very good. Awesome. So 10 words, hopefully some of them are new. I know some of you knew most of them. Um, so climate change, wildlife, renewable, pollution, endangered species, recycle, habitat, energy efficient, fossil fuel, and waste. So knowing these words will really help you understand, you know, news articles, scientific journals, that type of thing, when they talk about the environment. And if you do the IELTS test, a lot of their questions are about the environment. So any of you thinking about general IELTS for immigration or academic IELTS for going to university or college in Canada, study the environment words because not always, but often there are questions about the environment. So that is my English tip, learning tip of the day. Also, it's a good thing to study charts and graphs. So we don't have a lot of time. Uh, we're not gonna spend much time on this tonight, but I found some charts and graphs about the environment. So for example, this one is talking about, you know, Canadians, how much, you know, um, how much carbon dioxide and how much bad gas we produce for each person. And Canada is among the worst countries for creating these gases. So in this table, we are number three. We are the third largest polluter in the world. After Saudi Arabia and America, Canada is number three, which is not very good. But it's really important that you guys can understand these tables or charts and describe them. So you can practice making sentences about these charts on your own because I know IELTS and some of the other tests you have to do just that. This one is talking about in Canada. So how much gas is created by each province? And you can see that Saskatchewan and Alberta are the highest in Canada because they produce a lot of the oil and gas in Canada and Nova Scotia is around the middle. And this one is about who is responsible for the gases. And a lot of it comes from the oil and gas industry, but also transportation. So that's why we need electric cars, electricity, heavy industry, buildings, agriculture, waste and others. And then the last one is about the temperature. So they're expecting the temperature to rise in Canada. If we keep creating a lot of these gases. And if you look at it, that red line is very bad. That's if we don't control how much gas we create. And the blue line is the best case where we have low emissions. So I encourage you to look at these. Maybe you can watch the video again, talk about it or write about these graphs and what are you seeing in them? All right, last thing we're gonna do, we have just five minutes. I wanna hear from you 10 things we can do or 10 ways to help protect the environment. So I'm gonna be a little bit harsh on your spelling and grammar. So do your best, write one or two or three ways we can help protect the environment. For example, don't throw your garbage out of your car window. It drives me crazy. Uh, scared to watch, to be honest. I know, and I think, you know, in the news, you hear it too much, right? Oh, the world's getting hotter, we're gonna die all that stuff. And it's scary. And I think that people can't hear that all the time, right? So they just stop listening. They stop watching. They stop paying attention because it's too much. It's too much to think about. So I'm scared too. Everybody's scared, but at least we know there's a problem. And for a long time, we said, oh, there's no problem. 
now most people at least say, yes, there is a problem and we need to do something. All right, so 10 things we can do to help protect the environment. I wanna hear your ideas. If we can get 10, that's great. And that would be the end of the lesson for today. So who can write number one? Actually, I'll write number one for us. Number one, don't throw garbage in the streets, lakes, forests, etc. All right, so there's one. Don't throw garbage in the streets, lakes, and forests. Once you throw garbage there, it's called litter. All right, so Beatrice has, wow, lots. So you have five. Avoid waste. Very good. Don't waste food. Don't waste anything. Number two, recycle. Very good. Um, in Canada, you have to recycle, right? You can get in trouble for not recycling. Um, they can refuse to take your garbage if you don't recycle properly. They can fine you. So make sure you do recycle. Walk instead of drive or take the bus instead of drive. Very good. Four, don't pollute. Awesome. And leave resources untouched. Great advice. You gave us five awesome ideas, Beatrice. That's awesome. Thank you very much. So... We're almost there. We just need a couple more. Uh, we can help the environment by saving water and recycling. Perfect ideas. So use less water, take shorter showers, don't leave the water running when you're brushing your teeth, things like that, and always recycle. Thank you very much, Mary. That's great. Alyssa, we can protect the environment by promoting awareness of what is happening all around the world in youngest generation and teaching them through our example. Very good. So excellent sentence. Um, the younger generation, I would probably say the younger generation. And exactly, if you are a parent, I think it's so important to talk to your kids about the environment and lead by example, give them a good example, so they know what to do. Hey, plant trees. That's a great idea. So Tony, plant trees. We need trees to help clean the environment. That's an excellent idea too. And if you can't plant them, maybe you can donate money to an organization that plants trees. Alyssa got uh, my feedback, so that's great. So think about 10 ways to help the environment. Do it, teach your kids. Um, and if you do that IELTS test, you might have to write about it on the IELTS test. So that is it. We're out of time. It's a one hour lesson. Um, I want to thank all you guys for coming and you did a great job. So hopefully you got something from tonight's lesson. We got lots of practice typing and listening. So that's great. Um, if you want, you can check out the website to write start newcomer services website. There's my email address. And if you want, you can buy us a coffee and a donut at the last link there. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I look forward to seeing you again on Thursday. Take care everybody, bye-bye.